So today we're going to be working on our M series Mercedes and we're going to be tackling our engine code that is causing our check engine light to come on and to be specific we're going to be tackling this code which is P0400 which indicates a malfunction in our EGR system. Hey 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 how's it going do it your sulfurs. That's right we're going to be working on the Mercedes today and we're going to be fixing this guy and we're going to be doing this while looking slightly different due to a beard trimmer incident. Anyway, we're going to start with the basics and work our way up to try to diagnose this P0400 code. Now again, we're going to be doing this on this Mercedes obviously, but the things I'll go over in this video will apply to any vehicle that has an EGR setup. All right, so for those that don't know, EGR stands for exhaust gas recirculation. It's a setup made to recirculate some of the exhaust fumes from your exhaust manifold or exhaust pipes back into your intake manifold. And it's only supposed to be doing this at medium loads, which is basically 80, 90% of your driving time, which is, you know, at cruising speeds, etc., and not at wide open throttle, nor at idle. Now, by doing this, you know, it supplies some inert gas from your exhaust system because, you know, the gas that's going through your exhaust system has already gone through the combustion chamber of your engine. So there's very little hydrocarbons nor oxygen in that gas. So when it supplies that inert gas, back into the intake manifold, it takes some space in your combustion chamber, therefore will reduce your combustion temperatures and therefore reduce NOx, which is an emissions gas that you get tested for if you ever have to take your car into a, get a smog, which is in California, basically an emissions test. All right, so back to the P0400, this code usually indicates a lack of, or no flow at all, of exhaust fumes or exhaust gases from your exhaust manifold through your EGR system into the intake manifold. Now obviously more than one thing can cause this. You could have a bad EGR valve, you could have broken vacuum lines to your EGR valve or the EGR solenoid. You could have carbon buildup inside the valve itself or again the supply pipe from your EGR valve to your intake manifold. You could have a bad solenoid, a bad computer, bad wiring, etc. But you know we're going to start from the basics and we're going to do a visual inspection first and then go from there. All right, so on this car, the EGR valve lives back here in a tough to get to place, but we're gonna try it to anyway. So first we'll start, we'll uh, remove this engine cover. Gonna have to actually remove this cap first. There. Then we'll put this cap back on so nothing can fall into our engine. All right, so that didn't do as much as I was hoping, but anyway, we can see a little bit better. So this connector, is a connector for our EGR solenoid. This pipe that's behind this pipe here comes from EGR valve, which is down here and goes to our intake manifold. And then our EGR valve again is underneath this pipe. Maybe I can get you a, just a glimpse of it. You can see it right there. Anyway, I did a visual inspection of the vacuum lines that I could see. They all seem to be in good condition. They're not dry rotted or anything. So what we're gonna do next is actually remove the vacuum line that is going to our EGR valve and connect our vacuum pump, which is gonna require doing the old school reach around. So I got the vacuum line off the EGR valve. And now we'll grab our vacuum pump and I'm gonna see if I can feed this through here. Yep, and we'll attach it to our EGR valve. Yeah, I think we're on there. All right, next, before we even turn on the engine, we're gonna do a quick test and make sure our EGR valve can hold vacuum According to service data, only six inches of mercury will open this EGR valve, but we're gonna go up to 10 anyway and make sure that the vacuum holds, which means that there's no leaks from the diaphragm, at least of this EGR valve. All right, so if you're at this step and you have a leak, you have a bad EGR valve. The diaphragm is leaking, can't hold vacuum, needs to be replaced. Of course, this is given if you don't have a problem with your vacuum pump, nor the vacuum line from your vacuum pump to the EGR valve. All right, so ours is holding, so we're gonna release vacuum and do the next step, which is apply vacuum with the engine running. Because like I said, your EGR valve is not supposed to be open at idle. So the way this test will work is that, you know, you turn on the engine, you warm it up, then at idle, use the vacuum pump to open up the EGR valve, allowing for the circulation of exhaust gases from your exhaust system into the intake manifold. And again, since this is at idle, you know, your throttle plate is closed, not a whole lot of air is getting to, to the inside of your engine. Now all of a sudden you open that EGR valve and you get inert gas, exhaust fumes entering your engine, going to your combustion chamber. It's, this could cause your engine to run really rough, could cause misfires, or make your engine stall out as well. If your EGR valve is working correctly, it's opening and you have flow from your exhaust system into your intake manifold. Now I should mention that if you're lucky enough to have a scanner capable of doing active tests or bidirectional controls, you could go through that and go to your EGR solenoid or EGR vacuum transducer and then, and then with the engine idling and warmed up, 
you activate this and see how your engine behaves. So yeah, if you have a scanner that does this, you don't have to dig in with a vacuum pump to begin with. But the problem is with this scanner, you know, let's say you use only the scanner, you activate the solenoid and the engine doesn't struggle, doesn't misfire, doesn't stall out. That doesn't tell you much. It just tells you that you have problems with your EGR system. But the way we're doing it with the vacuum pump is that you know, you're splitting the system in two. If, if, if we get the results we want, which is the engine to struggle and stall out with the vacuum pump, then that means that the EGR valve itself, the piping from the EGR valve to the intake manifold is all in good order. You, know, you don't have a leak inside your EGR valve and the pipe is not clogged with carbon buildup. And you can go on to the other side of the equation, which would be your solenoid, the wiring, the vacuum line to your solenoid, and your course computer. And that's where this actually, this test would be good, which is, you know, you rule out that part and then you use this test to rule out the other part, which is the solenoid, the wiring, the connectors, and the computer. All right, so our engine is warmed up and we're gonna apply a vacuum here and see what happens. Oh, look at that. It's about to die. Not dying yet, but it wants to die. Take vacuum away overcorrects the fuel trims, supply vacuum. Oh, stalled out this time. All right, so that was interesting. So what this test indicates, as we mentioned earlier, is that there's no problem with our EGR valve, nor is there enough carbon buildup inside the valve or the pipe from the valve to the intake manifold that would cause our P0400 code to set. So what that leaves is gonna be the, the solenoid, the vacuum lines that run to and from the solenoid the connector, the wiring, and the computer. So that's what we're gonna check on next. Now one other thing I'm gonna briefly touch upon that could set a P0400 code along other codes is gonna be if you have problems with your uh, manifold absolute pressure sensor, which on this car is this guy right here that someone I think has messed with before because it has a loose screw here. And uh, there's probably a bracket here and there's another screw that's supposed to go here. But anyway, if you have a problem with this sensor or the vacuum line that goes to it, which is this guy right here, that it runs from your intake manifold. Uh, you know, your course computer, you could get a faulty P0400 code indicating a problem with your EGR system, all the while it's that. You know, there's a problem with the sensor or the vacuum lines or the wires and et cetera. But it's unlikely that a problem with that would only set a P0400 code. You could have, you would have other codes. Also, I checked on, uh, you know, just briefly on the live data on the scanner. You know, this in the, the, the data on the scanner indicates that, you know, this is within spec, there's uh, nothing that pops out as far as the readings from the manifold absolute pressure sensor goes. So what we're gonna do is to dig in and have a closer look at the vacuum lines going to our EGR solenoid. And actually, I believe that we can pop this loose and it doesn't do much, but you know, this whole thing has to come out. All right, so we'll undo these clips. There's also two clips on this. We'll undo that. This piece comes out. Then we'll remove the connector for our mass airflow sensor. All right, next, in order to remove this piece, we're gonna have to remove this bolt that's holding this dipstick tube in and try to push this out of the way to gain access to the bolt that's right behind it that is holding this piece in on this side. And it's gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt. And then we're gonna remove the second bolt and remove that bracket completely. This bracket needs to be out of the way. All right, next you need to remove this bolt and you need an E10 socket to be able to remove it. All right, so after we get it loose on that side, we're gonna have to come back to the driver's side and then there's a breather hose that attaches to that piece that we need to loosen. This is pretty old and brittle. Hopefully it won't break while we try to remove it. I tore it. I tore it a little bit. Tore a little bit on the side, so we'll probably replace this at a later time. All right, next there are two clips that you'll need to remove to get this air hose out, one up top, right underneath that fuel rail. This guy right here, you need to push these guys out and push it that way. Okay, it's fairly easy. Now there's one more on the bottom that it's gonna be impossible to show you that you'll need to remove. I only have to loosen this, get it out of the way. Two 10 millimeter nuts hold this in. All right, so we'll get this loose. All right, so in order to get this piece out, it looks like we're gonna have to remove our coolant reservoir. I already got my catch can underneath. We're actually gonna just remove this hose here, 
drain all the coolant that's in this portion, probably is gonna come out of our heater core, that's okay, into our catch can, remove our uh, coolant reservoir, that way we can pull this out with ease. So we'll undo this clamp. Try to aim as best we can into our catch can, make sure no water gets on our air filter. Open up our coolant reservoir. While that's going on, we're gonna undo these other clamps for these other hoses. Ha <laughs> ha, it's got a broken nipple. We're getting deep, quick. And we'll do one last clamp. All right, here we go. Now we get this out of the way. All right, now we should be able to get this out without much fuss. There we go. Um, by the way, here's a look at the clips. This is the one up top. You push this apart and push this that way at the same time. And the bottom one, this one, it hangs on to a bracket, so you push, press this down and push it out. Uh, but after loosening this one, this one came out fairly easily. Also on the 3.2 liter ones, you may be able to pull this out without removing the coolant reservoir, but this is a 4.3 liter one. It's a little bit bigger. There's less space back here, I'm assuming. So you, uh, you probably, you should really remove this coolant reservoir. But hey, now the good news is you can see what the hell I've been doing here. So here's the EGR valve. Here's the vacuum line connected to our vacuum gauge. So what I'm gonna do is actually get this out of the way. And here's the vacuum line that goes from the solenoid to the EGR valve. We're gonna remove this. And take a closer look at this. It doesn't look to be in bad shape. It's not cracked, it's not clogged. So this shouldn't be the problem. Next, we're gonna pull out the vacuum line that goes from the intake manifold. Oops, and it came apart already. This is the vacuum line that goes from the intake manifold to the, to the solenoid. Yeah, it's, this one's pretty brittle. Yeah, it's torn up. I'm gonna have to, yeah, it's gonna come out in pieces. All right, so here's a look at our vacuum line. I barely touched this or pulled on it, and you know, it fell apart, and as you can see, this is pretty badly worn out and dry rotted in the back. It probably leaks right through here. Can't hold a vacuum. So when the engine grounds the EGR solenoid and turns it on, since this can't hold vacuum, no vacuum goes from the intake manifold through the EGR solenoid, to our EGR valve. And that's why we're failing or getting that code, the P0400. It's not due to a clog, it's not due to the EGR solenoid itself being bad, although we're gonna test that after we replace this vacuum line. But it's due to simply this one, aha, good catch. Aha, the stupid thing already crashed on me. Yeah, it's due to this vacuum line not being able to hold vacuum. And by the way, if you ever work on these cars, there's actually three vacuum lines. There's one vacuum line from the solenoid, that guy, to the EGR. And there's this vacuum line that's still on there that's from the intake side of the solenoid to the outtake or the exhaust side of the solenoid. And then there's another one that there's no way I can show you, but it's in there. It goes from the intake manifold to the back of that EGR. So that's the one we removed and that was the one that was leaking. But we're gonna replace all these three vacuum lines. All right, so it's actually the next day and we got ourselves some parts and we should be able to finish this up today. So yeah, we got ourselves our PCV hose, part number 46097 by Dorman. This is for 22 bucks, available at AutoZone and O'Reilly's. Napa actually sells a cheaper one for 12 bucks or something, but that wasn't gonna be available until a few days, so I just simply got this one. Also, you'll need some 5.30 seconds Vacuum lines. All right, so here's how things look with the vacuum lines on. We replaced three of them, and as you can see, space is really limited down here. So you might wanna wet those vacuum lines with some water so they slide on easier. Also, you wanna be careful, don't force them too much, otherwise you're gonna break one of these nipples, and you don't wanna do that because no one likes a broken nipple. All right, next it's time to put this guy on. We're gonna swap out this PCV pipe while it's out here. Slide it on. Next, we'll slide this in. Route our PCV pipe first. Yep, there we go. And then simply slide things on. Make sure they clamp and click into place. All right, next we install the bolt that holds it in. Again, E10 or, you know, you're gonna need a female torque socket for this. And then the bracket that just goes below it, that's for our transmission oil dipstick tube. All right, then before we forget, we'll put on the connector for our MAF sensor. All right, next it's time for our coolant reservoir. There's gonna be four hoses that you'll need to reconnect. This guy up top, there's this guy, and there's the connector. Make sure that clicks into place. And there's one big one down here. I 
put this on, and this guy, oh, this one's missing a clamp. And we'll simply tighten down all the clamps. And next we'll reinstall this hose with a new hose clamp. And then these two nuts that hold in our coolant reservoir. And then we we'll reinstall our air filter housing. And these guys down here. And this baffle piece, make sure it's nice and tight so we don't have a vacuum leak off of this. And then make sure clamps into place, there. Next we're gonna to top off our coolant reservoir, make sure you add the right coolant. This is it for this car, this is concentrated, so you're gonna to have to mix this 50-50 with distilled water only. There we go. All right, now as far as testing our EGR system now, if you don't have a bi-directional controller or a scanner like I do, you would go and remove the connector for your EGR solenoid or transducer. You pull the connector out, and then you can connect your power probe or you know, a ground and a hot wire from your battery to that while the engine is running at idle. Once you energize that transducer, exhaust fumes or EGR you know, should be on and exhaust fumes should be circulating through the intake manifold and your engine should struggle or better yet die. But on this car, since that connector is really hard to get to and even if I remove it, I can't really get my power probe in there to energize that solenoid to show you guys. I'm simply gonna use my uh, scanner with bi-directional controls, but you know, you don't have to. On most cars, it's not gonna be this difficult, usually, to get to that connector for your EGR solenoid. So you can do this test. But again, the benefit of using the scanner is that not only you verify that everything on the EGR side works, but also if you can use the bi-directional controls of the scanner to energize this, you verify that also the computer works. All right, so the engine is warmed up. I got the scanner ready. And we're gonna activate our EGR solenoid and then you guys are gonna keep an eye on the engine, see if it uh, reacts the way we want it to react. Here we go. Oh, there it is. Hopefully you guys heard it. There was a noticeable drop in the engine RPM and it is struggling a little bit. Or molar in a little bit. It kinda wants to die, but it's not as bad as when we did it with the vacuum pump. I think with the vacuum pump, we could apply more vacuum and open up that diaphragm all the way. The results are in. Oh, there you go, we just died. The results are in and we're, we're fine with the EGR. So yeah, that's pretty much how you diagnose problems with your EGR system. Now, of course, every system is set up just a little bit different, but most of them, if you know how they work, you know, the same concept and you know, you can diagnose problems with them. It doesn't matter if it's an EGR system on a European Mercedes Benz, an Audi, a Ford, a Honda, whatever. All EGR systems are meant to do the same thing. And if you know the concept and the basic components that make up an EGR system, you can diagnose problems with it. So yeah, hope this video helped you out and didn't go over your head. And if you liked it, make sure you subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Also do me a favor and check out my other videos. Some links on this side of the screen, in the description box, and also in the description box as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.